Hey, it's Sol, and we're going to do a deep dive into the armor crafting professions in the Shadowlands Alpha. That's blacksmithing, tailoring, and leatherworking. All three can be covered at once because there are only a few differences that make them unique, which can be a good or a bad thing. Whatever the case, by the end, you'll have a stronger understanding of what each profession will offer and will be closer to answering the age-old question. Is this going to make me money or what? And don't forget that this is the Alpha. Let's get started with what happened to Legacy Armor Crafting and the 1 through 50 experience. In this example, we'll look at this Zandalari troll mage that I made on the Alpha, who learned leatherworking, you know, smart move. Also ignore the 45 gold cost for now. I actually expect all of these training costs to go down considerably with respect to the revamped Choose Your Expansion experience. Imagine being a brand new player and being asked to throw down 45 gold just so you can get started with your profession. Anyway, what you notice here first are these Relic of the Past recipes. There are five versions of them, and they are very cheap to make, and they change both the item level and required item level of the items that you craft. Now what items, you might be asking. Let's take a look at low level Zandalari crafting and this 8 piece coarse leather set. If we look at the recipe, you can see that, hey, this has a required level of 45, I can't wear this, shoot, I'm gonna go on the forums and make a meme, but check out this optional reagent icon. Clicking on it shows you what you can add here and hey, you can now add a relic of the past. With this, you can add a relic of the past and you'll want to add the rank 1. You can now make gear for yourself or others that is wearable at level 15. For context, completing the new Exiles Reach will put you at around level 10, as well as creating an allied race, they start at level 10 too. The coarse leather vests, the arm guards, the gauntlets, leggings, and treads let you attach a rank 2 relic of the past, not a rank 1, it starts at a rank 2, meaning that you can make some for yourself to wear at level 25. Then at level 35, you can make yourself a waist guard. All the while, you'll be able to remake this gear for yourself with these relics as you level, all the way up to the point where you can create a full 8-piece set of item level 100 gear with very basic recipes. This is pretty neat. It touches into the whole roleplay of making gear that might not look all that fancy, but it's far more potent thanks to your skill level. Functionally, it means that professions are relevant while leveling. Obviously, this might not mean much to the power leveler who is just trying to grind their way to max level quickly, but I still think this is pretty cool. This modified style of crafting applies to all the armor professions, including weapons, with the exception of many high-end epic recipes from each of the expansions, because really, why? Why would you waste resources making stuff like that for leveling? Now let's get to the optional reagents, the attachments that you get to add to recipes to customize your crafted pieces to provide power, utility, and control. Some of these reagents can be made by your own profession, while many will not. This is just one of the ways professions will be dependent on each other for Shadowlands, which ought to make for an interesting and fast-moving economy. I'm going to go over each of them, but my testing has been limited. I don't know if some of these effects stack, but I'm going to leave a chart up so you can look at who can make what and what slots you can attach these optional reagents to. The Alchemist Pouch increases the duration of flask effects, while the Loosened Belt increases the duration of well-fed effects. The Reinforced Girdle lets you retain your well-fed buff even if you die in an arena or a battleground. The Alethium setting adds a socket to your modified gear. The Hydrodynamic Accelerators increase your swim speed, while the Shadowy Rabbit's Foot increases run speed. The Necrostatic Microcapacitor is a really long name, and it increases your primary stats after completing a world quest. The Craftsman's Pouch gives a chance to give an extra skill point when crafting. I can totally expect people to make sets to improve their quality of life when, I don't know, doing PvP or sitting around crafting, maybe running old world content too. This is a crafting approach that I really hope follows into later expansions, even if we just get identical recipes for higher level gear. I think stuff like this is just pretty cool. Apart from obviously armor type, the crafting professions make a few unique items for uniqueness and profitability. Let's run through each by profession. Blacksmiths can make skeleton keys to open doors, they can create sharpening stones and weight stones to increase melee damage, and they can create shadow ghast ingots, one of the reagents to create the base items for legendary blacksmithing and jewel crafting recipes. 
Tailors can make cloaks, which unlike other craftable armor, have not two, but three slots to stack stats. Mathematically, this puts tailors at a great advantage, almost to the point where they can negate cloak drops in Shadowlands, or at least make farming for a specific cloak drop a very low priority, at least until tailors start pumping out the base items for legendary cloaks, which they can make too. We can only wear one legendary at the start of Shadowlands, but not knowing how the customization of legendaries will go, I have a feeling that many players will still value the stat optimization from cloaks. And tailors can make bandages. I mean, maybe the cloaks are why tailors otherwise don't contribute a whole lot. Leatherworking has a tiny bit more to add. They can create armor kits to give us a significant stamina boost for a few hours, which ought to keep the gold flowing. They have new drums in Shadowlands, but many of the old drums you have will still work. And they can create a much cheaper version of the anti-daze mounds equipment because, before you know it, you're going to need it. It's still hard to talk about legendary crafting because we don't know the entire process. We can obviously see that there are base items the crafting professions can make, but it's a bit inconsistent. So take a look at this. Blacksmiths can use shadow gas ingots, which are legendary in quality, but tailors and leather workers don't have an equivalent. We also don't know what reagents are required at the Shadow Forge, the place that will ultimately do the actual legendary crafting. One more thing about legendary crafting, recipes. So far on the alpha, the recipes for these base items will be obtained from Torghast, the upcoming Endless Dungeon. We don't know if they're bought with a currency, or if they randomly appear when completing cell blocks, the sixth floor climb. This might lead you to believe that, oh no, we're going back to RNG, woe is Blizzard, have they learned nothing. Fortunately, you're being led wrong. Remember, at this point in the alpha, there are few, if any, crafting reagents that are soulbound, including these base legendary pieces. So unlocking these recipes is a realm-wide effort. You might be able to make a chest piece when no one else can. Meanwhile, that one jackass is the only one making a helmet and is charging like a million gold tip because for the moment he can. So when it comes to making legendaries, it's less about luck and more about what you're willing to fork over or what you're willing to charge. We still don't know the exact details though, so consider this a guess. But I can speculate about what looks to be, maybe, special covenant sets for each profession. This is just a theory, because what we're seeing in the alpha is very inconsistent at the moment. Using blacksmithing as an example, if I filter by the phrase bone grafted, I can see this max level eight piece bone grafted set. There are a total of four similar kinds of sets per armor type, and from the wording, these represent each of the Covenant Zones. These recipes are also not included in the blacksmithing profession vendor. This also applies to leatherworking. However, these recipes are included in the tailoring profession vendor, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, because why would you have max level recipes available at a low level, especially because the Relic of the Past reagents do not apply here. My guess is that based on the covenant that you choose, you'll be able to get recipes to craft a set of covenant gear, as in one of the several color variations. And maybe, just maybe, since these are bind on equip items, everyone will be able to wear at least one color variation of covenant gear, even if you're not a part of that covenant. That would be like really cool. Unless it's a color that you don't like, but it's still really, really cool. It's also not confirmed though, so don't hold your breath. Now let's get to the question. Will your armor crafting profession make money? Yeah. I mean, it's not much of a question. It always depends on your realm's economy, but for the most part, professions have always made money. It's more of a question if your profession feels useful for power progression, does it feel cool, and etc. I think in Shadowlands, we have a good bit of both. Tailors will make overpowered cloaks. Blacksmiths will bring sharpening stones back to the table and leatherworking armor kits? This has me going back to like old school crafting days. Professions will depend on each other for reagents that will make arguably powerful and customizable gear like we haven't seen since Warlords of Draenor. Of course, who doesn't love legendaries? And all three professions will contribute, but it sort of remains to be seen which slots will be in the highest demand. I have a feeling it's going to depend on how we customize these legendaries, as well as how easily certain gear slots drop from other content. And if I'm right about making a covenant set, expect Trade Chat to blow up with people offering entire transmog sets to sell. 
The number of total recipes feels pretty limited, without a doubt. My hopes are that as the expansion grows along, we can get access to higher level crafters marks, which increase item level. I know I didn't talk about them at all, because without knowing their source, there's not much to say, but these crafters marks can easily be what keeps crafting professions relevant throughout Shadowlands. I hope to see other items too, like toys or mounts, you can't go wrong there. And that's it for my deep dive into the armor crafting professions, and I'd love to hear some of your thoughts in a comment. I'd appreciate it if you hit that like button if the video was useful, and to subscribe for more of this, Shadowlands coverage, and all things Warcraft. We'll see you later. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. Thank you.